I'm gonna make it quick because I think everybody wants to go home. Um, okay. So I'm gonna talk a bit about CSS fonts. Um, it's just like random bits of information about CSS fonts. So um, when, when most, I, I like to think that most of us have used uh, web fonts in our projects before and you probably have to use them you probably have written or copy pasted the add font face rule from a web font generator or if you um, really into it you have wrote it by hand to that I applaud you but you realize that there's a lot of formats and like why on earth do we have so many formats right so a little bit of history I mean um, the first fonts were pixel based bitmap fonts back in the day right when screen resolutions were like really low you were like playing like 8 bit games and you thought those were fantastic um, but the thing was even though the screen resolution was low when you printed stuff out um, you still needed the resolution to be high otherwise when you, you got a shitty print so fonts at the time we needed a solution whereby you could have high resolution fonts without um, making them exceptionally huge because if you wanted to make a really high resolution bitmap font it would be really really big and computers at the time probably couldn't take a 50 megabyte font I think so what happened was that you could either compress the bitmap fonts or you could think of something else so in 1975, I might be getting the date wrong because I don't have speaker notes in front of me. Uh, Donald Muth uh, created a system, created something for the tech system that would actually generate compressed bitmap fonts. But uh, John Warnock, who was the founder of Adobe, he actually came up with PostScript, which I think what most of us are more familiar with. And that was the first vector-based Font. And uh, vector based fonts are actually an excellent idea and that's the same technology that we're still using nowadays. So TrueType came about and TrueType we still use today, right, uh, was a collaboration between Apple and Microsoft. Um, and, and they basically what fonts are, right, fonts are basically just containers for glyphs, glyphs as in each of the individual characters and font formats describe those glyphs. So, all these, what all these font formats do, I, I don't think that anybody who makes fonts here, but basically fonts are, font formats, they actually contain tables that, that give you information on what, what the glyph should be. Um, so TrueType was a, a big improvement over the old bitmap fonts, and both Microsoft and Apple went on to try to improve upon TrueType, so Apple went off and made uh, TrueType GX, which was later renamed Apple Advanced Typography. So that's their sort of iteration on TrueType. While Microsoft actually went to Adobe, and then they worked together to come up with OpenType, which is OTF format, which is the, probably the format that is very, very widespread now. So what these more so-called new font formats have is that they have they are able to contain a lot more glyphs than before so um, for those of you who are not Chinese um, uh, basically a, to, to have a Chinese a Chinese fonts are actually very big because we have a lot of glyphs uh, very the most basic simplified Chinese font would have about 20,000 glyphs so that that's a lot and the old formats couldn't uh, contain that many so OTF and uh, Apple Advanced AAT, they can. So, so that's 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 great. Um, we also have EOT, which actually stands for Embedded Open Type. Now, this was Microsoft's proprietary format that they wanted to propose for the web. But when they submitted this as a proposal to the W3C, it got rejected um, because proprietary. So then we came up with uh, WOF, Web Open Font Format. Uh, this was pretty good because I think it involved a lot of industry players. There's Microsoft, Mozilla, and Opera. And this is the format that was accepted by the W3C as a, a web format. It's quite good in that 
the uh, it's really small in size, and WAF two has I think thirty percent better compression than WAF. So so that's why you have so many font formats. History lesson. So this is how a font face rule looks like. I think if you started a few years ago, you realize that you have like a lot in your source. You have to declare like everything. Nowadays, you can actually get away with just declaring WAF and WAF2 because if you can see, the support for WAF is practically all green. Um, Opera Mini generally just does, doesn't support web font, so pick a nice system font. Um, but other than that, actually, these two lines are enough. Um, yeah, so if you are tired of typing so many, just use these two, it's fine. Oh, well, come on. Uh, okay. Um, I need speaker notes for this, but basically this is supposed to explain how um, browsers pick fonts. Like, when you use the font family rule, you usually have something called font stack, where you have like, I don't know, five or six fonts in the font family uh, property. So this, this font selection algorithm was in the spec in CSS 2.1, I would think. Um, over the last two decades, the, the, the algorithm has expanded, but the general idea is just that your user agent is going to pick the first font on the list, and it will sort of try to match criteria. So in your font face rule, you actually give each font, um, like for example, font style, font weight, font uh, etc. I'll cover later. So there, there are some criteria. So when you try, when you want to apply this certain font in this certain run of text, the browser will actually see if the font matches the criteria. For example, if it's a, a font style italic, you actually try to find a font that has this font style italic attached to it. Um, so if it doesn't find it, it will actually go jump skip to the next font family. So next and next and next. If it does find it, it will match and it will use that particular font to, to render your text. Um, if it goes through every single font family and doesn't find anything, then it will fall back to the system font, uh, depending on your OS, so that will be different. Um, in the event that you actually end up, you have a character that cannot be rendered in any font. So this is um, a famous or infamous Chinese character that has like the probably the most number of strokes is pronounced I think it's pronounced Piang. It's like the name of a noodle. Um, <laughs> it, I, I have to ask why. <laughs> I actually heard that it was a marketing gimmick by the guys who like made the noodles. But you know, Chinese. Anyway, um, so I don't think there is a font that had they may or may not be this particular glyph in, in, in a font. So Outside, you will get something called, uh, you, you get a, this, this blank square. I think this would be more familiar if you use Chinese software because when I was a kid, um, the, if I didn't install Chinese correctly on Windows, I would just get like a row of rectangles, like mahjong tiles and like nothing. Uh, we call that, actually we call, we call that tofu. And uh, that's why actually Google's font is called noto in a sense that, so Google has this, font uh, family that they want, what they're trying to do is they, they want to cover like every single language in the world because you know Google can do this sort of thing. Um, so they named it Noto in a sense, it's like no tofu. So that's how you come up with the name. Trivia, see this is C CSS fonts trivia guys, so this is like trivia night. Um, so a, a tip for, for using, if you're doing like multilingual, uh, you could be doing Chinese, you could do, be, be doing, I don't know, Arabic script for example, declare the Latin fonts first. Why? It's because if you're, if you're, you, it's, a, it's almost a given uh, for, for typeface designers in general who are doing like non-Latin based fonts, they will design the Latin based character inside the font also. So like if I'm using um, Wei Ran Zhen Hei Ti, that's the Chinese font, there's going to be, uh, the ABCs are going to be included in the font, but odds are it may not look very good. Um, so, and also font rendering in Mac and Windows is different. So if you're, you, somehow the Latin characters in the Chinese fonts like uh, Simpson, if you have tried it before, it doesn't look very good, especially on the older versions of Windows. It 
Yeah. So if you declare the nice, quote unquote, nice Latin base fonts, your Latin characters, your ABCs, will render in the font of choice. And because the, those fonts probably don't have the Chinese characters, they will fall back down onto your Chinese font of choice. So always declare the Latin fonts first. Um, yeah, just a tip. Also, um, the specification says that the browser, the user agent, has to recognize the font family names like case insensitively. You never know what could go wrong, so just put the font names in quotes, just in case. Be safe, guys. Be safe. So there's also this thing called generic font families. So like um, sometimes I'm lazy. I don't want to design and look for fonts. So I'll just like, ah, okay, serif. Uh, turns out if you, depending on your OS, the HTML language of your, your site or character set or your browser, each of these generic font families will use a different font. So for example, serif and sans serif is not so fun. Let's go for cursive. So if you use cursive and let's say you're using Mac, you will get the Apple Chancery font. But if you're using Windows, you get Comic Sans. Um, if you use Fantasy, uh, Gabriola, I think, shows up in Windows 10. Impact shows up in older versions of Windows. Uh, I can't pronounce the third one. Papyrus, maybe, that, ha that shows up in uh, Mac. So, I mean, if you want to be uh, interesting and just like, oh, everybody on a different OS will see a different font, you can like, use cursive and fantasy, why not, right? You know, fun. Um, so CSS fonts now is on level three. Uh, level four is going to add four more uh, generic font families. System UI, uh, if Sebastian Deckers were here, he'd have something to say about system UI. Emoji, apparently, is going to be a generic form family, which will be... I, I, I wonder what math is going to be, because I haven't really read the spec yet, but like, mm, OK, what's the generic form family for math? And uh, Fang Song is actually a Chinese uh, font family. Uh, how should I explain it? It's like the... It's kind of like serif for Chinese fonts, but a bit skewed. This, this doesn't make sense if you're not Chinese. I'm just going to skip this. Uh, so there are like basic font properties. I think everybody's familiar with the first four. So you have font weight. Yeah. Font weight is how uh, the, the width of the glyphs, uh, the weight of the glyphs, sorry. So you can actually use for numbers from 100 to 900, which is lightest to, to heaviest. You can also use keywords like, uh, oh crap. No, 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 keywords. Uh, okay. I don't have, I, I had this in the speaker notes. I don't have speaker notes in front of me, but basically there are keywords you can use. Um, can't remember what those are, sorry. Uh, font stretch is, so you can select whether your font face is condensed or expanded. So all these actually apply into the, your add font face rule. Font style is for your uh, italic or oblique. So italic is like properly designed italic font, while oblique is just the regular face that got like skewed to the side. And normally, uh, if you work with like designers that are very particular, they, they hate it when you do oblique. They're like, you're ruining my design. What do you mean? And then I uh, yeah, get a lot of, I get earful from them. So if you have, like, just use the, always include the actual italic font. The, the oblique version actually really doesn't look very nice, to be honest. Uh, font size, everybody knows. So font size adjust um, is, is relatively new, came about in uh, level, level three, fonts level three. So what it does is that, remember earlier when I said font stack, right? So if the font doesn't exist, um, the browser will use the next one or the next one. So those are like fallback fonts. So sometimes your fallback doesn't really match your original first choice. So the X height of your fallback may be a little smaller than your original. So what this property actually does is it's going to adjust the font size of your fallback font to match the X height of your first choice font. So it kind of is a legibility fix. Uh, font synthesis I kind of like because as I said, um, your browser is actually has, it's a very well-meaning piece of software in that if you did not install uh, a heavier font or a proper italic version of the font you're using, it will like, you know, to best effort, it will try to like 
um, okay, the developer wants this font to look bold, but I don't have a bold font. Never mind, I will try to synthesize it. Usually, it doesn't come out right. Like, if you have, a, a, again, a, a designer who's very particular about it, you're like, this font looks terrible. What did you do to my font? Then like, yeah. So you can actually set this value to, n to none. And so that you like browser, please don't get can don't change my font, and it will just it will just not it will just use the um, original font. So so when you say bold, it's it's not going to be bold. So you're, you're actually saying browser don't synthesize, don't do any of those full italic nonsense. So these are the two properties. Uh, non so this is font face, how font face rule works. Um, looks uh, very complicated because usually we just use the we usually just touch on the blue ones. We don't really use the, or, or we use the first four. Um, but what I find useful is actually the Unicode range property because um, this is uh, text in Russian. If anybody can read Russian, I'll give you lots of chocolate. But this is just a, a run of text. Oh, you do? Come, come, come. <laughs> you, can you tell everybody what this says? Can you, can you tell everybody what this is? This is about a short history of uh, Tetris. Excellent. <laughs> um, so these these are not these are not Latin characters. These are Cyrillic alphabets. So it's not not every font has support for Cyrillic letters. So like for this particular set of slides, I'm using this font family called Magnetic Pro, and it doesn't it doesn't have Cyrillic alphabet support. So what I did was I found a font so. I found a font that kind of is looks a bit similar in, in, in terms of look to it, but it does support Cyrillic characters and it's called Bender. So what I can do is that I can actually use the same name. So normally when we declare font face, it's like, okay, give the font family name and then what, where you get the font from and, and, and you leave it at that. What you can do is you can use the same, same name but you can declare a different font and you use the Unicode range to tell the browser that when you encounter characters that fall within this Unicode range, so this particular range is actually the range for Cyrillic alphabets, use the, use the font that, use this uh, Cyrillic font that I declared. So how this works is that if, um, let's say I'm on a website with multiple pages, if my pages don't contain any Cyrillic letters, th this won't load because it's not needed. Now, but when it encounters any of the characters that fall within this Unicode range, then it will load this, this particular font. So in a sense, it's kind of like a performance thing as well, because if you, the font is not needed, you don't want to load it. Because even if I optimize and I subset my fonts, the uh, most basic, just like basic Latin set will come in about 20 kilobytes, give or take. So if you use like, it adds up, right? If you use only one or two fonts, because until variable fonts become a thing, usually you're going to have uh, the normal version, the uh, bold version, and the italic version. So that's like three. Then if you have like a bunch of other languages, it, it adds up, you know, like cumulative, cumulatively. So you, if, if you don't need it, you don't want it to load. So, so this, is a, this is a good way to, to do things. And uh, okay, there are also things like font feature properties, which is allow you to use the open type features because we mentioned OTF earlier. So... These are the most common ones. So like if you want to adjust the kerning, uh, font variant position, you can turn on ligatures if you want to. And all these are, are properties that you can control using CSS. There is an older value that is font feature settings in that it gives you access to like the over hundreds of open type properties. So these are actually the most common ones that you can use and that's why it got specced in that you can like specify these as font feature properties when you when when you are writing them in your, your CSS. These are the most common ones. What nobody actually talks about because I think nobody really cares about Chinese is that they these are these two, Font Variant East Asian and Font Language Override, are more for like internationalization purposes. So Variant East Asian applies um, for Han characters or even Japanese characters, right? Um, if you're not familiar with, with Han characters, 
there are actually differences if you are talking about Japanese, uh, Korean, traditional Chinese, and simplified Chinese. So the same word can be written using different glyphs. So this particular open open type property allows you to like toggle the the so. I think a more obvious one is the second one. So this is actually read as Ta Shui or University. The first one is actually simplified. So the traditional version or the Japanese version is a is a bit different, it's a bit more complicated. But they actually read the same. But you can toggle you, you can toggle these different glyphs depending on the audience or of your of your site. For example, if you're in Taiwan, you'd be using a traditional Chinese font. If you're in mainland China or um, to some extent Singapore, Malaysia, you'll be using simplified Chinese. If you're in Japan, you'll be using the, a Japanese font. And and the glyphs are actually different. For that one, the university one, they, they use the simplified Japanese one. Oh, okay. Yeah, good to know. Uh, font language override actually um, more relevant example would be for languages that have uh, like Turkish, right? Because some ligatures they will have the F and the I. F I is a ligature where they will combine the F and the I into like one glyph. But there are some languages in the world that they have a dotless I. So you, you don't want the ligature to turn on um, because then it will sort of like ruin, like you, you're messing up the person's word. So if... Um, Isn't that a different character altogether though? What do you mean? So a dot the size is not actually an I. Correct. So if you... But sometimes if the uh, font you're using doesn't record like it doesn't recognize, doesn't know that it, like it doesn't support a particular language. Um, it might just, you, you'll still turn on the ligature anyway because it, it's assuming it's like a traditional Latin like note uh, with, with a dot. Um, again, there was a language in my speaker notes, I can't remember what it is, but it's, it, it has a dotless I. So what you can I do... Is it, no, so there, there, there are Turkish fonts, yes. Um, there's a lesser known, there's a, like s those smaller languages that they don't have fonts specially for that particular language. So if you set your HTML language to that particular language, for example, you would use font language override to force the browser to use the Turkish font instead. This will make a lot more sense if I had my feature, if I had my speaker notes in front of my face, but I don't. So font feature settings is the is the one that is actually well, very well supported across all browsers, but it's not encouraged that you use this because it's um, it, it it goes it allows you to really set go through each of the hundred open type properties all the way down to like I don't know G pause or like vertical positioning. So I did the reason why the the font specification has the 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 these earlier ones is that because these are the most common ones that everybody uses. So it's just trying to make people's lives easier. So you don't have to memorize the uh the specific code for each of the font feature settings. So that's that. Um, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's, that's all the CSS font trivia we have tonight. Uh, if you have any questions about CSS fonts, you can talk to me. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's it. Do we have announcements tonight? Sorry, can I, can I just raise an issue that yes, I please. found with, with um, italic Oh sure, yes. I, I got caught with this one that I had I specified Italian and then my font family but the font the app font thing yep. had also said Italian. So Windows looked just fine. Mm -hmm. On Safari it was the Italic. It was nearly lying on the goddamn ground. So it was double Italic. And I Wait, did what? a bit of reading about that and what it said was uh, if you're going to use italic in your, like, I or uh, EM in your HTML, then you should not use italic in your font specification. You're using the italic um, family, but you don't tell it to do italic, because that will double it up. Well, that was Ooh. interesting. So I've been happily developing in Windows and never saw it. Oh, yeah, I'll have a job. Uh, <laughs> Windows font rendering is terrible. Um, a lot of... A lot of... 
places I've seen declare their font faces incorrectly, which probably caused that. That was probably what was going on, yeah. yeah. So once I declared it the right way around, then it looked fine on Windows and, and Safari. You shouldn't be using font style italic if you've got an italic font. You should be just setting a font uh, type to an italic font. Because the thing I inherited before I knew anything yeah. about, of course. <laughs> see a lot of people like defining their font faces and they'll put like different names for regular bold and italic or whatever and like essentially treating them as different fonts mm. when you should really be naming them the same font and specifying that this one is like this font weight and this one is this font style and then in your CSS you can yeah just treat it as reg regular uh, like you would normally, and it'll render it properly. Yeah. yeah. And they're all actually the same font family. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, so what he's saying is that some people, because um, you would have your regular font, your bold font, and your italic font, so some people will name it, because the font family uh, property, when you're in, in the font face rule, is actually a, a label. So you could name it like bananas, you could use the font Helvetica and name it bananas and use bananas in your CSS and like sort of screw your team. Don't do that. So, so what, what he's saying is that some people do like, okay, Helvetica bold, Helvetica italic, Helvetica regular, but what, what, what you should be doing is naming all of them Helvetica and then using the font style uh, property, uh, property label for each of the the different font files that you are declaring. That's like the quote unquote correct way of doing it. So, yeah, I just quickly add yes, that. please. What I was given was a thing here. It was called something something italic. Ah, here. okay, right? okay. And then I had specified italic here. So it doubled up. And I had italic in the HTML. <laughs> so it was <laughs> wall to wall italic on the ground. <laughs> So it's italic right? cute. So I think, I don't know what I have to get right. I think probably this one and then everything was fine. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't want your italics to be squared and cubed, then, you know, do it the right way. If you don't care about any of that, you use smell data. Do you see that? No. What is that? Spell it. Smell data. Like smell data that is smell in the <laughs> Sounds mature. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> a font for a more <laughs> civilized time. Huh. I see. Well. Um, well, that's happening. Anyone got any announcements or anything? It's the perfect font that you want to really tease your design. The cutting. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Save this for April 1st, 2018, everybody. <laughs> I can think of a few designers I can install this. Anyway, okay, announcements, anybody uh, hiring, looking for a job, have a